call up our next witness, the Ontario Federation of Labour. If you could just state your names for the record and you can get right into your presentation. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for inviting me here today to speak on Bill 100. My name is Chris Buckley. I'm the president of the Ontario Federation of Labour, and with me today is the Director of Research and Education, Tabaki. The Ontario Federation of Labour is a champion of all workers' rights. We're here today because people are what matters most. Like the Ontario budget, Bill 100 fails to protect workers, their families, their communities, or the public services they rely on. The government must withdraw Bill 100. There are 199 new legislative changes in this bill. But in this case, more doesn't mean better. The priorities set out in this bill are wrong-headed and will hurt Ontarians. Bill 100 makes it harder to sue the government instead of increasing access to justice for equity-seeking groups. It raises the legal threshold needed to proceed with civil litigation, including class action lawsuits and breaches of contract. Let's also remember that the 2019 budget cut next year's funding for Legal Aid Ontario by $133 million. Specifically, the government has targeted immigrants and refugees, stating that Legal Aid Ontario can no longer use provincial funds on these cases. That cuts away two-thirds of their funding for refugee and immigration cases. The government must reverse this discriminatory decision. Bill 100 sets the stage for age discrimination in the workplace instead of respecting collective bargaining rights. Pensions are workers' deferred wages. Bill 100 allows the government, through regulation, to require post-secondary institutions to reduce, limit, or change the compensation of individuals who are working after having taken their pension. This can override legal binding collective agreements, a violation of workers' constitutionally protected charter right. It also targets workers based on their age. Collective bargaining must happen at the table between the employer and the union. The government must respect the collective agreements. Bill 100 proceeds with one of the biggest structural changes in Ontario's health care history instead of investing in publicly delivered health care. It narrows the scope of where the Public Sector Labour Relations Transition Act, PSLRTA, is applied. The PSLRTA offers predictability in labour relations. By changing it, Bill 100 will contribute to more labour disruptions and greater instability. Ontario's health care system is built and sustained by public health care workers. This government needs to reverse its decision to drastically change our health care system. Bill 100 prohibits a school board from having an in-year deficit for a fiscal year. Instead of investing in public education and reversing the government's decision to increase average class sizes, Bill 100 introduces the inequitable and inefficient care tax credit instead of building more child care spaces. Ontario has the most expensive child care in the country, with some parents paying more than $20,000 a year. The CARE tax credit fails to bridge the affordability gap for Ontario parents, even for the lowest income families. Tax credits do not build quality child care spaces, reduce wait lists, or create decent work for all child care workers. Low income families cannot afford to pay high child care fees upon, up front, then wait until tax season to receive a rebate. Parents will now be forced to rely on unregulated and for profit care, which provide low quality care compared to public and non profit providers. The government must protect our children and establish universal access to child care that is affordable, high quality and publicly delivered. Instead of enforcing workplace rights and protecting vulnerable workers, Bill 100 legislates gas stations to drive the government's anti-climate action agenda. Gas stations will now be required by law to display stickers about the cost of the federal carbon prices and otherwise fines of up to $10,000 will be issued daily. Meanwhile, in March, the Minister of Labour launched a new online self-audit tool for employers to determine for themselves whether they are in compliance with the Employment Standards Act. We know self-regulation regulation does not work. Enforcement is needed. One minute. The government must lift its freeze on new proactive inspections, which are meant to prevent wage theft and other employment standards violations. Instead of a consultant with the labour movement and ensuring worker and public safety, Bill 100 is creating conditions for a race to the bottom for worker protections and a race to the bottom line by allowing construction firms to hire more apprentices out of lower wage than journey persons. The government must restore authentic apprenticeship training in the trades that teaches a whole trade, not just parts of it. When it comes to governance of the Board of Trades, there must be a worker selected representative in all positions earmarked by an employer. In conclusion, the OFL urges the government to withdraw Bill 100. 
The OFL has submitted numerous recommendations in our pre budget submission that would have shifted this government's focus from big business <coughs> to the people that power our economy. People are what matters most. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to start questions on the government side. Mr. Downey? Yes, thank you for, for being here. I, I guess I'll start with, the, with our Child Access and Relief from Expenses uh, program, the CARE program, because your submission says that it's inefficient and inequitable. Um, I'm not sure in terms of geography with Ontario whether you're familiar with where Elmville is. Elmville is just outside of Barrie. It's in my riding Good. Uh, near Horseshoe Valley. Uh, ski nice hills. area. It's a beautiful area. Um, there is no child care there. Well, there should be. Yes, there should be. And should now be there child is. care right across the province. Yeah, and now there is. And because parents can now choose to use the home uh, child care that they choose with the neighbor who's running a child care. Hmm. And it's not an institutional facility. So I, I think we're coming is at it. Is it regulated? From, of course it's regulated. All, all child care spaces mm -hmm. are regulated in Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, and the parents get to choose where they go. So in terms of equity, I think we have to take our Toronto lens off and look at what's happening in the rest of the oh, province. Oh, I'm not just talking about it. Toronto. I'm talking about the entire province. Well, it, we're, it doesn't appear to be that if we're talking about efficiency and equity. But let me move on to the next piece. The... You touched on legal aid, and we're not directing legal aid on how they spend their money. They, they run their own. We've been clear in the media about that. Uh, although people uh, initially thought that we were directing them in terms of immigration, but I do want to... Uh, so $133 million out of their budget is, is not directing them? They, they have to make decisions about... We, we've in, they've had increased costs and lower service. So mm -hmm. uh, there are some decisions to be made in that program. And I just want to touch on, because you mentioned immigration... Uh, the division of powers in Canada and who's responsible for immigration. So now you're playing politics with us. No, no, it's, I, look, no I, I know exactly where you're headed. I didn't write this. the BNA Act. I'm just asking you who's but, responsible. But now, but, but now you're playing politics with our submission because the, the population is growing. It grows every month. And legal aid provides an excellent service to those who need it, most vulnerable people that need it. And now you're slashing their budget. No, I'm asking who's responsible for immigration. Sure, go ahead, Tabaki. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually a shared responsibility between the federal and provincial government. Yep. This provincial government, the Ford government, has withdrawn all provincial funds, and that's two-thirds of the spending that, the feder uh, that these uh, immigration and refugee cases receive. So that means that all they have now is $45 million, whereas previously they had 66% as a top-up to that to get to 100. So you've actually directed them by withdrawing provincial funding. And to your point about child care, let's not forget that in Bill 66, you actually res uh, loosen the restrictions as to the number of children that an individual can care for at any given time, whether that is in licensed or in unlicensed child care. And so now, through this initiative, not only are you not bridging the affordability gap, because really, by giving folks up to, not exactly, but up to 75%, at a $6,000 uh, maximum cap, that means that you can only get child care for about $8,000 in this province. Where in this province are you going to get child care for $8,000? When you're looking at the uh, group for toddlers, in Toronto, for example, it's $20,000 per year. And I know it's not just Toronto. This submission also talks about, for example, Mississauga, it's about $13,524 annually. In Ottawa, it's $12,084 annually. It's not just a Toronto concern, it's a provincial concern. So for folks, they're only getting at most $6,000, but again, they have to pay the entire cost up front. So at the end of the day, at tax season the following year, you receive a, re, uh, a rebate of up to 75%. Yeah, so, so that's what, so no, 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 I'm sorry. That's what makes it inefficient. No, no, excuse I, me, excuse I'm speaking. Me. One minute. No, 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 he's the chair. Okay, Mr. Downey. Okay. Your, your facts are right in terms oh, of us wow. providing more childcare spaces and providing an income-tested uh, refund. Um, we, it is true that somebody making $300,000 is not going to get the same subsidy as somebody that's making $50,000. That's intentional. And we are creating more child care spaces. We already did in Bill 66 with, with changing the, the ratio. So you're absolutely right about those things. Those were intentional. Those were things that we meant to do and, and to provide more service. But those, I guess 
We'll so leave the rest I'm sorry. Thirty was it seconds left. But was it also intentional to relax those regulations that were actually introduced when there were deaths, infant deaths, in the GTA? Okay, I don't need to hear fear mongering about it. Oh, that's it's not, not fear mongering. That's it's actual, actual factual truth. That's right. not fear mongering. I'll I'll that's why those regulations were introduced. Okay, thank you. We're going to proceed to the opposition side for questions, Ms. Shaw. I think that we could discuss childcare, and I think we need to because. Uh, when we were talking about this change to the ratios in the House, uh, the member from Eglinton Lawrence, when we said children died in, ch in care, she said only one baby. So first of all, I can't believe I could hear that comment one baby in the is legislature. Too many. Exactly. But would you please just explain again the number of children that died in home-based child care, why those regulations were in place, number one, which would be uh, important, and really just address how, for example, if there were a fire in one of these daycares, which has happened, how is someone going to be able to carry two children and other children out of a fire? I mean, these are serious concerns that we have raised. This is over and above this care uh, rebate that does nothing to address making sure that there are uh, increased adequate, safe child care spaces, and it really does nothing to address the really number one problem when it comes to the cost of child care, which was unregulated fees, costs. So can you just tell us, in your uh, experience, the landscape of child care and how this is in no way uh, uh, any, doing anything to build an adequate child care system in Ontario? Sure. Uh, so I believe, I believe it's from 24 uh, there was a report that came out from the ombudsperson who actually looked into this after I think there was about seven or four, I can't remember, yeah, I'm sorry, four, yeah. uh, child care deaths in the GTA itself during that period. And the reality is that these ratios also allow, um, they don't count the number of children that you have as the provider itself, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. And so you're then compounding it on top of that. Exactly. And you're right, like this is not only an issue about affordability, but it's 100% an issue about safety. And by relaxing those regulations, you're putting children's safety at risk. Mm -hmm. And it's not, um, it's not just about affordability, it's not just about high quality, it's about the fact that it's publicly delivered because Ultimately, you want to think that the government, that our institutions have our best interests at heart and that they're looking to make sure that our children receive high quality, safe and affordable childcare. And when that is taken away, it makes folks no longer believe that they can trust their government. Mm -hmm. And that is problematic in itself. Thank you for that. Thank you. Because, you know, this, this child care file, it's not an easy one, but there's no easy fixes to this. And, and, the, and just to introduce a uh, tax credit that they talk about, people will get $6,000. Uh, you know, there was a study done that, in fact, based on the requirements of that, that uh, tax credit, 41 people in the province of Ontario would qualify for the full amount. Mm -hmm. So it's fallacious to say that this care is going to increase or create anything like a child care uh, uh, system that we need in Ontario. Having said that, do, does any of my colleagues have any further questions on any of the issues? No. Okay. So uh, you know the other. So now that we're doing the child care, I, I just would like to talk a little bit about uh, when you talked about the changes to the Labor Relations Act. I mean, we heard from the Ontario Nurses Association yesterday. We heard from the Ontario Hospital Association that what they're creating uh, with this change to make, making a requirement they're able to move the work without taking the workers. Can you just talk about how that your members are feeling in terms of the security of their job, their ability to do their job without this hanging over their head that, they're, that there's going to be destabilized? Well, it's no secret for a long, long time there's been so much insecurity over workers' heads for far too long. You know, as a movement, we made significant gains under the old Bill 148. And as of last June the 7th, life has changed in this province. Bill 148 was gutted. Bill 47 was introduced after five hours of consultation. Yeah. Workers' rights were destroyed. Uh, I just don't understand why to, today's government needs to consistently chip away at workers' rights. You know, especially for our young people. Like we talk about the child care. That is, that is our future, our children, our grandchildren. I think collectively, driven by the government, we should do everything we can to ensure that our young people have great chances of having a great future and a great <laughs> life. And as you chip away at workers' rights, such as the, the piece where employers are going to are going to judge themselves whether they're complying with the Employment Standards Act. 
Hey, listen, not every employer is a bad employer, but there are some bad employers out there. So if you leave it up to them to police themselves, workers' rights are going to be chipped away at it daily, day in and day out. I would just I would just say that this is not the type of environment we want to create for workers. Listen, we're all for creating good paying permanent jobs in the province of Ontario. Uh, but in reality, that's not the case. And that's why workers' rights, whether it's the Employment Standards Act or the Labor Relations Act, should be strengthened, not not okay. diminished like the current government has done when Thank they eliminated. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.